Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm here with Lisa today and we're going to have a walk around the track and tell you how horse track systems yeah. work. So the track's around about two acres, so it's a small track, but actually that's the beauty of horse track systems or paddock paradise, whatever you want to call them, is that actually your, your land works really hard for you. It's just one of the bonuses of having them. Um, we've got seven horses here and have had up to eight around the two acres and I can honestly say even after this really wet winter I don't need boots any any taller than over your ankles not even that really so you can imagine that's not only is that great for the horses it's great for the humans as well so this part of the track here is now about seven years old i've been here eight years and we got this done a year after we moved in and it was dug down about probably not even six inches actually and it's um made from road planing planings um and was rolled and it's still great it's just still functional so that is really money well spent a lot of people don't like to invest in the surfacing they think it's expensive but if you've got a horse on a horse track, it's as important to have surfacing as it is to have a stable if you have a stable kept horse. And if anyone says a horse track doesn't work, it's because they haven't got the surfacing and you have to invest in that. Otherwise, it, it, you can still make it work, but only in dry weather. If you want it all year round, you have to surface. So this bit's the, the, the first bit we did um, and we put the stables there the stables are there just in case we've never actually ever had to use them oh no tell a lie we did we had a horse that had a um my horse had a big kick once or cut or cut we don't know how it happened she did have to stay in there and was very grumpy about it but the rest of the time it's just for hay but at least we have got that um and then the shelter's used all the time this shelter we got a little bit later a few years later that's i think it's two three years ago we got that shelter and that's one of the best things we ever did. They're in there all the time, but completely free choice. So they go in there. They don't go in there when it's wet necessarily. They go in there if it's wet and windy or if there's loads of flies, but just wet doesn't bother them at all, but they choose. And it's really interesting to watch them when they choose to go in and they know, they know when to go in and it, usually the wind comes from that way. So that's great. But if you get an east wind, they're over there in front of the, the, the hedges. I don't have to tell them where to go, they know where to go, so that's a really good investment. And we also bought the shelter with a bigger overhang, so not only have we got inside here, we can put the hay nets here and they've got some dry outside and obviously guttering, otherwise it all just goes down onto them. So it's all just a way of using the space as best as you can really. Hay box in there, so they've got some loose hay and just plenty of options for putting nets. Got little bits around here where they can go either out the wind or just out away from flies under the trees or in the shade. It's just another little place and just enrichment, just rather than a square flat field, there's little places they can go and I can hang hay behind here and just it's just really giving them choice and they can from there they, they know how to be horses and they know what to do. So how come you put hay in the little shelter here it just keeps it dry and little we've got little hamish and little phoebe and when it's grotty weather quite often we see them in there eating so you know the bigger ones might stick their head in there the little ones can stand in there and it's almost just really like a covered over hay box it was there left, left there from when the people before had goats but no point taking it down might as well use it there's one thing we're here is creative <laughs> so it's hay in there you can't forget our sprinklers. Oh, sprinklers. Our can't little summer our sprinklers. sprinklers. Yeah, don't. We're in the UK, so we don't use them loads. But last year, there was a good few weeks where we put those on. They're only cheap from Amazon, but it was just lovely. It was like a fine spray, a bit like when you go to Disney. It was like a fine spray. A couple of the horses were, they thought they were going to kill them, but it didn't take long and they were under there. And uh, you quite often find a human under there as well. So Usually me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And this little shelter, it's only small, but you know, two horses easily you'll find in there. So that they can lay down in there. I've just put rubber mat in and that just gives it a little bit more softness, but you don't have to. But it's all cosy out of the wind and the rain if they want to go in there. 
just another little area here. This is the newest piece of track and this this was only done last year so by now we're getting quite good at what we want and we want sand because sand's just so good for their bare feet. Um, so this has actually been dug out and then there's been um, crushed concrete, there's been a, a membrane, then a bit of drainage, crushed concrete, I think road, pla road planing's on the side and then filled in with sand and that's done the whole winter wind rain you name it everything's been thrown at it and it's still there and i'm thrilled to bits with that and that was an experiment and i'm so happy with that a little sand pit and it's actually evie that we usually catch laying in there she likes it's her that. bed it gets nice and warm she likes that this mound was created it's got bigger in time as the more track we've done but the mound the horses love the mound they love they love standing up there looking at the view pretending they're king of the castle so they all do that because there's a hay box up there quite often find them up there but what's great is we've got this so that we can push the barrow to the muck heap in the winter as well surfaced how often do you get the muck heap actually emptied or do you get it emptied yeah i do we got he, he, he's well overdue actually he's been a bit busy but um we get probably four times a year he comes and takes a trailer big trailer farmer comes and takes a big trailer load away so there's a little bit of a loafing area here just gives them a little bit more space so the track isn't always thin it just widens out every now and then so there's an area where they can all stand and have a little sleep so another box um, these trees we planted a few years ago they were really slow to get going but it's all the sort of natural bushes, trees, that um, hedges that the horses are browse on and the birds will um, nest in eventually. The horses absolutely are browsing on them now, but the, uh, the birds hopefully won't be long and they'll be big enough that they actually become useful to wildlife as well. So we put, now what we do is we put, as we're poo picking around, we put the poo around these bushes and they've gone shoom. So that was the answer. So we're already creating under here a whole load of little environments for insects so we're getting there you've got the insects there that will encourage the birds it'll encourage the bats it'll encourage nature so and hopefully they'll be able to nest in there soon so it's all hopefully just encouraging all the wildlife and the nature around us as well as we go we've sectioned the fields off into two the left hand side we use for the winter and this right hand side we use in the summer and we just let the horses in there now and then and it's another track with an inside bit as well so we've got a couple of options for grass for them we just give them a couple of hours because none of them are lam laminitic now they all need to not have too much grass but none of them are sick enough that they can't have any so we do let them have a few hours of the green stuff each day and they're fine this is the field we let them in in the winter for a few hours and it's just growing up now. Every year we put new meadow, meadow seeds in there or herbs and it's really got such a big variety of stuff in there now. So in the summer we might go in and pick some of those and put it on the track for the horses but what we want it to do is to flower and go to seed and then once it's gone to seed, when we get to about October, we we'll start letting the horses in there and they'll munch the seeds into the ground and go round again. So when it gets to spring, we'll take them out and it all grows again. So it's just like a big cycle, really. And what's happening is the seeds are starting to go over in the other places as well. So where this used to be, when we first moved in here, it was rye grass, which is awful for horses, and clover, which is awful. It's all full of sugar and really bad for their feet. Now, the only... it's hard to find a piece of green clover in there but we have introduced red clover because that's nice to have so we've got some of that and the rye grasses are now turned over to old-fashioned meadow grasses this is gorse which we've taken some pictures in the spring and all around here is just full of blossom and all these gorse were yellow so it's absolutely beautiful all along here where you've got the, the beech trees and the may trees they were all just white and it was just so pretty so um and hawthorn so this is their loafing area 
where they like to just have a little sleep and a lay down and rest. This bit isn't surfaced, but it doesn't tend to get that bad. But we've got surface around the outside, so they still don't have to get their feet dirty or muddy or wet if they don't want to. But these gorse now are big enough that they make a really good windbreak so they can stand whatever side they need to to get out the weather. And the same with these trees. They're just really great wind breaks. This is teasel. We've introduced that because we wanted gold finches. So we put these in and we've seen some. So that's good. Blackberries. Again, horses like them, humans like them. And then I'm just trying to put herbs along the side here where I can. Some do better than others. Further down I've put some roses, you'll see them in a minute. There's the roses down there. They're not beneficial to horses particularly, they just look pretty. So we put them in anyway. Some, uh, herbs here and some um, old-fashioned English roses, Rosa Ragosa here, which will grow soon. We put them in last year, so they'll be growing soon. And then they turn to um, they make rose hips, which are great for the birds and the horses like them. You can see, so that's good. Yeah. And then we're back round again to the first bit of track that we did seven years ago. So we why do you have logs? Well, we put logs here. In fact, we need to put more out again now, but. We line them up, they get like this because horses kick them eventually, but we put them in a line and it helps, it, it, A, it just creates um, just a, a enrichment, but it also is good for them to step over poles. If you ever have a horse physiotherapist come, they'll always say walk your horse over a pole, even if it's from the field to the stable, walk it over a couple of poles. So we try and put it across so to encourage them to do that, to help them use the muscles they should. And also, when we first put them in, they chew on them, especially the willow, they love that. So and here's their little pens. So each one, each horse, has their own little pen for feeding in. Um, that's just so that we feed them twice a day, and if they've got supplements, or it's just so we know, we can monitor what they're eating, we can put their magnesium in there, we can put their salt in there, and if they've got a supplement, which quite often horses that are on a track have got some condition, it might be cushions or laminitis or um, something or older, so they might they usually need some something, some supplement. So, by them having their own little pens, we can make sure that they've ate it. So, that's why we do that. So, do the horses have to be barefoot to be on a track? Yes, that really, that's the whole one of the big points of having a horse track system is that you creates the environment that um, helps the hooves grow how they should. So it takes the, you're, you're feeding them um, low sugar food because they haven't got grass. And if they have got grass here now, it is the, the old fashioned meadow grasses. We're giving them hay that's organic, not sprayed meadow hay. And any of their food that we give them is agrob cobs, um, which has got no sugar in. So the whole point of this really is that we can keep horses barefoot here and horse tracks, it's not just about the food, it's very important their diet, very important to take the sugar out of their diet, but it's also movement. And it's something that Jamie Jackson worked out. He was the man, he was a farrier, or is a farrier in, in America, and he studied the wild horses in the Great Basin. And he couldn't work out how his clients' horses had such bad feet, and yet there's these horses that are rock crunchers, walking miles and miles over rocks and boulders and just not flinching. And he worked out that they were eating low-grade prairie grasses and that their diet was somewhat different to the ones that his, um, his clients were feeding their horses, so he thought he'd cracked it, which, which he had to a, to a degree. So he, um, he went back and... He experimented on one of his clients' horses that he had a ranch and he changed their diet um, and still the feet weren't amazing. 
And what he worked out was alongside that is movement. You have to have movement. Well, we've only got a tiny tap track here, but what we do do is we put hay all the way around the track and we do encourage, and that's why it's thinner. By being thinner, the lead horse or the horses are pushing each other around all the time. So they're always really moving to find food as if in the wild when they keep moving. So that's, and you will see in a track system, you will see a line where the horses in the wild, they walk behind each other and make a line. And you, will, you can see that here as well. You can see where the horses have walked. Can any horse of any age be here or do they have to have, be an elderly horse with any medical conditions or anything like that or can it be anyone? any age I mean here we've gone from we had Nemo here when he was barely two um, through to Charlie who was 27 Char Nemo was a little Shetland two-year-old Charlie was a ex racehorse thoroughbred 27 or 28 um, so complete mix age it doesn't matter it benefits the youngsters because they live in a herd they they learn how to be a horse they learn manners um, it, they don't learn um, vices because they, you know, they don't. They're living naturally. They don't have to create vices. So it's just the most amazing way for a little one to grow. But also the older ones need to keep moving. You stand them in the stable, they get stiff, and it's boring. Um, so by being in a herd, they feel safe. The herd members are looking around so they can sleep, and they're just keeping their all their limbs moving so both ends and in the middle everything doesn't matter what size and it actually doesn't matter what breed if you're competing it's not easy it's not impossible but you know you, you may have to use a track in conjunction with um, stables but certainly horses pleasure horses horses that are retired horses that are growing where you're not having to compete them and clip them they can live on a track all year round and it can only benefit them. So do they get rugged or is it completely out naked? No, I mean, I believe most horses don't have to be rugged. We had Charlie, 28 year old, ex-race horse. He didn't have a rug on because he, he knew to grow his coat. And as long as there's always hay available, which there is here, um, and he has his feeds, they get warm from the inside. Even, it, it's actually not the end of the world if a horse shivers, it really isn't. You feed them, you make sure they have food, and they stop. It's, but it's not for every horse. Some horses just really do need rugs, so I'm not anti-rugs at all, but I do believe we over-rug and we don't need to. And here, all our horses, all year round, they don't need a rug. If, they, if, they're, if they're cold, they huddle together, they eat hay, or they go in the stables or behind the hedges, and they're fine. But we're not, you know, we're quite lucky in the UK. We don't particularly have severe weather. And definitely when it's freezing cold, they don't need it. You know, it, it's more the wet, really, the wet and the wind they don't like. Yeah. So why do they only have a couple of hours a day on the grass? Um, well, because I'm trying to, well, A, we've only got a few acres here anyway for seven, eight horses. So I don't want the grass to get stressed because that's not a good, that's not good for horses. If the grass starts getting stressed, it pushes up sugars and that's bad for them. So I rotate the, the little sections I've got, I rotate round. So they'll eat it down as if lawn mowers as if they're mowing it when it gets low and before it gets stressed I'll move them back on to another one of the fields that they'd eaten down a few weeks ago which is now grown again so I just keep moving them around so the grass doesn't get stressed and just to keep although the grass I believe has got a lot less sugars in now because it's the right kind of grass I still don't want them to go binging on it um, so it's just really a little bit of a treat and just just a little change of scene for a few hours. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and comment any questions you'd like to know and we can always answer in a future video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.